In this lecture, I want to do some additional examples about um, frequency distributions and then visual, visual sum, summaries for data. So what I first want to start with here is an example about um, football. So I'm a big um, football fan. So what I did was, is I did a survey. What I did, and I asked 20 people, who, what is your favorite New York football team? Okay. So who is... your fave New York football team. Right, so what I want to do is I want to show you the frequency distribution of this so you can see how it's done. And then what I want to do is I want to construct a actual visual representation of this. So I have these classes. Okay, so these are the groups that we're going to define people up into. Okay, and there's three New York football teams, right? There's the Giants, there's the Jets, and there's Buffalo. All right, so then what I did was I got the frequencies of each. I'm just going to put frequencies. So it turns out I talked to 20 people, let's say. And it turns out that 10 of them were Giants fans, 5 of them were Jets fans, and 5 of them were Buffalo fans for a total of 20 people. So what I next want to do is I want to figure out what the relative frequency is. Well, this is just 10 divided by 20, 50%, or the proportion is 0 0.5, we're Giants fans, 5 divided by 20, 0 0.25, we're Jets fans, and then another 5 divided by 20, which is 0 0.25, we're Buffalo fans. And this needs to sum to 1, remember. All right, so this is just a frequency distribution. Now, I just made this data up, but you can see um, how, this, how this is done. In this case, what we have is we have discrete data here. We have counts. So the visual representation of this is a bar chart. So when you construct bar chart by hand, you're going to start by drawing the first quadrant of the Cartesian plane. Right? And what we'll do is we'll do um, a frequency bar chart. So along the vertical axis here, I'm going to put the counts. So I'll just go by twos. And then along the horizontal axis, I'm going to put the classes. Okay, so the first one was Giants. Then we have the Jets. And then we have Buff for Buffalo. All right, well, then you're just going to draw the bars up to the corresponding counts. So there were 10 that were Giants. There were five that were Jets. And there were another five that were Buffalo. And sorry for the ugliness here. You know, working with the stylus is not always the easiest thing. But you get the idea here. We took just some survey data and I gave you immediately the frequencies. From the frequencies, we were able to find the relative frequencies. And then we were able to construct a bar chart of this. Okay, this is, this is constructing as grouping. So when you have discrete data, okay, so discrete is count, counts, you're going to show it visually with a bar chart. All right, but now what happens when you have continuous data? Okay, so this may take on any interval in some, or any value in some interval. So remember, continuous data are measurements of some type. Okay, so here's just an example. A manufacturer of insulation randomly selects 20 winter days and records the daily high temperature. Okay, so here are all the temperatures of uh, daily high temperatures for these 20 winter days. So what I want to do is I want to take this raw data and I want to put it into a frequency distribution. All right, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to order the data. And now for this one, instead of um, just grouping the data for frequencies, what we're going to do is we're going to do the, the class limits. So when you look at the data here, it, it's real obvious how you're going to want to group them, right? Like you're going to want to group like values some way. So it looks like, hey, all the values in the 10s, all the values in the 20s, all the values in the 30s go together, all the values in the 40s, and then all the values in the 50s go together. So my class, the way I'm going to do it, is I'm going to, to get all the values here, I'm going to start class. The first one is going to be 10 to 19. Then the next one's going to be 20 to 29. Then 30 to 39. 
right? Where 39 ends, 40 to 49, and then 50 to 59. So we're going to group all those together like that. Here the class width is 10, right? So you take the, the first class limit, lower limit, and subtract, subtract it away from the next class's lower limit, and that, that class width is 10. So all now you're going to do is count the values. So there's 1, 2, 3 in here. How many are in the 20s? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 in the 20s. How many in the 30s? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in the 30s. How many in the 40s? 1, 2, 3, 4 in the 40s. And how many in the 50s? There were two. So when you do this, just make sure that it sums back up to 20 so that you got it correct. 3, 9, 14, 18. Sums up to 20, so we're good. So the relative frequency now, this is just 3 divided by 20, which is 0 0.15. This is 6 divided by 20, which is 0 0.30. 5 divided by 20, which is 0 0.25. 4 divided by 20 is 0 0.20. And finally, 2 divided by 20 is 0 0.10. So when you sum these relative frequencies up, they sum to 1, which is what we want. All right, so that's great. Okay, so we've just taken this raw data and we've summed it into a nice frequency distribution. All right, so let's now show the visual representation of this. Okay, so let's draw the histogram of this. So the histogram, we're going to draw the first quadrant of the Cartesian plane. Up here, we'll do frequency. Now down here, you're going to start at 10, and we're going to do the class limits, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s. And we'll go by 1s. OK. Well, how many were in between 10 and 20? 3. How many were in the 20s? It looked like that was. One, two, three, four, five, six. So the histogram builds right off. It goes up to six. All right. How many are in the 30s? One, two, three, four, five. Histogram builds right off it. How many were in the 40s? One, two, three, four. And then how many were in the 50s? Two. Right like that. And that's what the histogram of this data looks like. So just to go back, discrete data gets bar charts, all right, counts. Okay, there's spaces between the bars. You know, Jets fans and Giants fans are different from Buffalo fans, so there's spaces between them. Continuous data here uses this limit grouping method to, to write the frequencies. And then when you draw the histograms, you build the bars right off them. Okay, because as one group ends, the next group starts. Okay, let's just learn about, we learned about uh, two other things. First, a stem and leaf plot and then a dot plot. So how would you do the stem and leaf plot for this? Well, you have your stem. And then you have your, oops, sorry, going back. And then you have your leaf. So remember, stem and leaf plots. The stem is the first digit, so it looks like we have values of 1. And then what are the leaves? It looks like a 2, a 3, and a 7. All right, the stem here, the next one is a 2. The leaf, it looks like a 1, a 4, another 4, a 6, a 7, a 7. The next stem is a 3, and then it's the value 0, 2, 5, 7, and then 8. The leaves are all the second values. Then we have the 4, right? And then the leaves of that one are 1, 3, 4, and 6. And then we have the 5s, right? And then the leaves part of that are just 3 and 8. What's really interesting about the, the stem and leaf when you compare it to the histogram, look at this shape here. It's literally the same as this histogram, okay? Just kind of tilted on the side, and then the heights are just the counts of the numbers, which is really interesting. So this, this think of the stem and leaf kind of showing the actual overall values, 
but showing also the shape of the data, the distribution of the data. All right, next we can do dot plots of this. Now, remember dot plots, I'm just going to start here. So you go to like the number 12, here's 11. Here's 12, you're going to put a dot. You're going to go to 13 next, you're going to put a dot. You're going to go to 17, you're going to put a dot. It's having trouble going in. And you go to 21 and you put a dot. You go to 24, you put a dot. You're going to put another 24, you're going to put another dot, which is above it. You're going to go to 26, you're going to go to 27, put a dot. Another 27, you're going to put above it. You're going to go to 30, you're going to put a dot. You're going to go to 32, you're going to put a dot. You're going to go to 35. 37, 38, 41, 43, 44, then there was a 46, then there was a 53, and then finally a 58. And this just kind of showed all the data put out as a dot plot. So this is just another way to visually show the data here. All right, let's do one final question here about uh, reading histograms. Okay, so you can see here it has the limit grouping. So the histogram here above, below, and it actually should be above, shows heights in, in, in centimeters, distribution of 30 people. Okay, so right off the bat, this is important. There's 30 people. Okay, so the first question says, how many people have heights between 159.5 and 169.5? Well, here's 159, here's 169.5. We're going to go to the top. It looks like that's seven people. The next question is how many people have heights less than 159.5? Well, that would be this bar here and this bar here because that's less than 159.5. So that would be nine people plus six people would be 15 people. Next, how many people have heights more than 169.5? Well, here's 169.5. More than that would be this, this, and this right here. So let's add that up. It would be 5 plus 2, which is 7, plus 1 gets me 8. Then the final question down here, you've got to be careful here. What percentage of people have heights between 149.5 and 179.5. So that's between here and here. So it would be these people, these people, and these people right here. Well, that's nine plus seven people. And this looks like five people right here. So nine plus seven is 16 plus five. That gets me, I'm just gonna write it up here, 21 out of 30. which is 0 0.7. And then just changing that to a percentage, because we have to write it as a percentage, it asks that, is 70%. All right, class, I hope uh, seeing these extra examples helped. And if you have any questions, let me know.